हेलो एवरीवन वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट वीवर्स आयरन स्मेल्टर्स एंड फैक्ट्री ओनर्स एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट पार्ट टू ऑफ दिस चैप्टर पार्ट टू ऑफ दिस चैप्टर एंड टुडे इज फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज इंडियन टेक्सटाइल्स इन यूरोपियन मार्केट्स एज वी डिस्कस्ड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो दैट इंडियन टेक्सटाइल वॉज इन अ ग्रेट डिमांड इन द यूरोपियन मार्केट्स so let's start by the early 18th century early 18th century means 1710 to 20 this period is known as early 18th century worried by the popularity of indian textiles wool and silk makers in england began protesting against the import of indian cotton textiles very simple thing you know that indian textiles was carried from india to western market western market specially in england in england it was in great demand indian textile was in a great demand but it was not good for the trade uh, uh, done by wool and silk makers because it was not beneficial for them so they started to protest against the import of indian cotton textile so the british government enacted a legislation banning the use of printed cotton textiles in 1720 chintz i hope that you are understanding it means chintz was banned in england in 1720 by passing a law in england interestingly this act was known as calico act so sometimes this question is asked that when was the calico act passed the calico act was passed in 1720 in england why it is known as calico act because this cloth was known as calico carried uh, from uh, calicut port and it got the name so after that uh, this cloth was banned in england so it was known as calico act 1720 at this time textiles industries had just begun began to develop in england unable to compete with indian textiles english producers wanted a secure market within the country by preventing the entry of indian textiles for getting the profit english manufacturers wanted to ban wanted to have a ban on indian textiles clear they wanted to prevent the entry of indian textiles in england the first to grow under government protection was the calico printing industry Indian designs were now imitated and printed in England. So, calico printing industry started in England. That was imitating and printed in England like Indian designs on white muslin or plain unbleached Indian cloth. So, it was just uh, uh, an effort by the English manufacturers to imitate the Indian textiles for competition with the Indian textile. competition with indian textile also led a surge for in technological innovation in england so due to the competition with in, with indian textile the british started to invent the new technological machines for example <coughs> in 1764 the spinning jenny was invented by john john kai but actually spinning jenny was invented by james hargreaves by james hargreaves by james hargreaves james hargreaves was a cotton uh, worker cotton weaver and uh, living in lancashire but after that uh, john kai used uh, uh, fast spinning jenny on a large scale he started the use of uh, this machine so the inventor of spinning jenny is considered john kai but the actual inventor of spinning jenny was james hargreaves in 1764 this increased the productivity of the traditional spindles the invention of the steam engine by richard arkwright richard richard arkwright uh, patented the steam engine and started the first uh, industry with the help of steam engine in 1786 revolutionized cotton textile weaving cloth could now be uh, woven in immense uh, quantities and cheaply too so in this way it helped 
uh, the increasing and the improvement in the industrial sector in Britain, especially in the textile industries. However, Indian textiles continued to dominate world trade till the end of the 18th century, means till the 1800. <clears throat> till the 1800, uh, Indian textile still was in a great demand in the Western uh, markets. European trading companies, the Dutch, the French and the English made enormous profits out of this flourishing trade. So these companies purchased cotton and silk textiles in India by importing silver. But as you know that we studied in chapter 2 when the English East India Company gained political power in Bengal after 1764 Baksar War and a slight after 1757 <coughs> after Plassey War. It no longer had to import precious metal to buy Indian goods. As we discussed that uh, the, British, uh, the British carried uh, silk, cotton clothes, textiles and other uh, commodities and uh, in place of that the British used to carry precious metals to uh, India but now they stopped it instead they collected revenues from peasants and zamindars in India and used this revenue to buy Indian textiles so this was uh, in this way these revenues were used as home charges to fulfill the home charges the needs for home charges uh, by the British in India. <clears throat> this one spinning jenny. This is a machine by which a single worker could operate several spindles on to which thread was spun. When the wheel was turned, all the spindles rotated. Here figure 7, a sea view of the Dutch settlement in Cochin, 17th century. This was a very famous port at that time. You can see in this image. This one. Where were the major centers of weaving in late 18th century? With the help of this map, we can know about the different centers of different clothes like plain white, checks and strips, chins and silk. So in this map, uh, with the help of these different symbols, we can find the places of different types of clothes. For example, with the star, plain white, Lahore, Sarhind, and the place Patna, Deka, now it is in Bangladesh, place near Calcutta, Surat, Ahmedabad, Burhanpur. In the same way, uh, other places we can find out with the help of these symbols. So you can uh, fill the map, blank map, with the help of this map. Weaving centers 1500 to 1750, because after 1750, uh, European traders broke the network controlled by the Indian traders earlier, Indian traders and suppliers earlier. Bengal was one of the most important centers located along the numerous uh, rivers in Delta. The production centers in Bengal could easily transport goods to distant places. One more thing about Deka, Deka in Eastern Bengal, now Bangladesh was the foremost textile center in the 18th century. It was famous for its Malmal and Jamdani weaving. So these two things you have to remember. Next one. Uh, this is about if you look at the southern part of India in the map, you will see a second cluster of cotton weaving centers along Coromandel coast. Coromandel coast, which is the Cor Coromandel coast. Uh, Tamil Nadu coast is uh, known as Coromandel coast. Kerala coast is known as Malabar coast. Malabar and this one is known as Coromandel stretching from Madras to northern Andhra Pradesh. On the western coast, there were important weaving centers in Gujarat. Who were the weavers? Who were the weavers? Weavers used to uh, weave the textile. It means they, they used to combine the threads to make textile. So weavers often belonged to communities that specialized in weaving. Their skills were passed on from one generation to the next so for example the person is a weaver and after that his uh, son also uh, used to become weavers the tanti weavers of bengal in bengal weavers community was tanti tanti weavers of bengal the julahas and momin weavers in north india julahas so many times we have listened this word julaha 
एंड सेले एंड काइकोलार एंड देवांग्स देवांग्स ऑफ साउथ इंडिया देवांग्स ऑफ साउथ इंडिया आर सम ऑफ द कम्युनिटीज फेमस फॉर वीविंग सो दीज वर दीवर्स कम्युनिटीज द फर्स्ट एज ऑफ प्रोडक्शन वॉज स्पिनिंग इट वॉज द फर्स्ट फेज और स्टेज द प्रोसेस ऑफ वीविंग और प्रोसेस ऑफ मेकिंग टेक्सटाइल द फर्स्ट वॉज स्पिनिंग अ वर्क डन मोस्टली बाई वीमेन चरखा एंड टकली वर हाउस होल्ड स्पिनिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स यू कैन सी इन दिस मैप सॉरी इन दिस पिक्चर दिस इज स्पिनिंग व्हील विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस स्पिनिंग व्हील और चरखा एंड दिस वन इज टकली वीमेन यूज टू स्पिन द थ्रेड्स द थ्रेड वॉज स्पन ऑन द चरखा एंड रोल्ड ऑन द टकली वेन द स्पिनिंग वॉज ओवर द थ्रेड वॉज वोवन इन टू क्लॉथ बाय द वीवर In most communities, weaving was a task done by men. So spinning was done by women, and weaving was done by men. For coloured textiles, the thread was dyed by the dyers, known as rangrees. So rangrees were the people who used to dye the clothes or textiles. For printed cloth, the weavers needed the help of specialist block printers known as chipigars. Chipigars were the printers, those who used to print the uh textiles so four uh, things we have known here that women used to do spinning men for weaving rangrees used to dye and chipigars used to print the clothes handloom weaving and occupations associated with it pro uh, provided livelihood for millions of indians you can see in figure 9 this is tanti weaver of bengal printed by belgian painter uh solvins in 1790s so dear students in this video we have discussed the about topics in the next video we'll discuss about the decline of indian textiles and further thank you have a nice day